Matam Guneshu Sakta Bandhanam Ratam Pispa Pumsi Muktaye. Somebody has to move it in here. The stage in which the consciousness of the living entity is attracted by the three modes of material nature is called conditional life. But when that same consciousness is attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is situated in the consciousness of liberation. Srila Prabhupada's concise purport. There is a distinction between Krishna consciousness and Maya consciousness. When Eshu or Maya consciousness involves attachment to the three modes of material nature, under one which works sometimes in goodness and knowledge, sometimes in passion and sometimes in ignorance. These different qualitative activities with the central attachment for material enjoyment are the cause of one's conditional life. When the same cheta or consciousness is transferred to the Supreme Personality of God and Krishna, when one becomes Krishna consciousness, he is on the path of liberation. So we'll go to the next verse. Aham mama me mod no Maham Mama be me no tai Kamalo Badi Malay Vitam Yadamana Sudam Andukam Masukam Saman. When one is completely cleansed of the impurities of lust and grief produced from the false identification of the body, as I and bodily possession is mine, one's mind becomes purified, and that purified state he transcends the so called material happiness and distress and purport. Kama and loba are the symptoms of material existence. Everyone always desires to possess something. It says here that desire and greed are the products of false identification with oneself and the body. One becomes free from this contamination and his mind and consciousness also becomes freed and attain their original state. Mind, consciousness, and the living entities exist. Whenever we speak of the living entity, this includes the mind and consciousness. The difference between the conditional life and the liberated life occurs when we purify the mind and the consciousness. When they are purified, one becomes transcendental to material happiness and distress. In the beginning, Lord Krishna has said that the perfect yoga enables one to transcend the platform of material distress and happiness. How this can be done is explained here. One has to purify his mind and consciousness. This can be done by the bhakti yoga system as explained in the Narada Pancharatri Pancharatra. One's mind and senses should be purified, Tatparatvena Nirmalam. One's senses must be engaged in devotional service to the Lord. That is the process. The mind must have some engagement. One cannot make the mind vacant. Of course, there are some foolish attempts to try to make the mind vacant or void, but that is not possible. The only process that will purify the mind is to engage it in Krishna. The mind must be engaged. If we engage our mind in Krishna, naturally consciousness becomes fully purified. And there's no chance of entrance of the material desire and greed. Om Gyan Timidandasya Kinajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yenatas My Shri Gudaveda Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapitam Yenabutale Swain Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Ne Nirvishe Sasun Yavadi Pastyat Yade Satarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitana Pavuna Tananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vindavansha Kopa Tu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pae Pacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namaha 
Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So these two verses are connected so we brought them into one presentation and that is transferring consciousness from material to spiritual, or as it's, as it's mentioned here, away from the three modes of material nature. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, there's nothing beyond these three modes. In other words, material life is all uh, encased in the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. These modes are, mode is, synonymous with the word rope. In fact, guna means rope, guna means rope, um, mode. And so the same Sanskrit word translates into two different words, mode and rope. And therefore, <clears throat> uh, as a mode, mode means a particular direction and rope means that which binds. Well, what which binds ones in a particular direction according to the nature of that particular direction, and that is the different modes. As Prabhupada says, happiness, religiosity, knowledge, mode of goodness, longing for material results through different types of endeavor or to enjoy material energy, passion, and um, trying to acquire more and more and more simply to engage in sense gratification falls into the mode of ignorance called loba, greediness. So passion and uh, well, desire, material desire, fruit of activity and greediness, or you might translated a little different, lust and greed, make up the two lower modes of material energy. And then there is the transcendental realm, which is Sudha Sattva, that is devotional service to the Lord, or activities performed without any material result with the desire to please the Lord, that is called pure devotional service. This, uh, the second verse that we read mentions there is a distinction, and it's, it's repeatedly mentioned, between consciousness and mind. Uh, the mind is not conscious. The mind is the seat of consciousness. Consciousness is actually the place where the soul exists. The soul is synonymous with the, with the principle of consciousness. Wherever there is a soul, there is consciousness. When there is no soul, there is no consciousness. Matter has no um, energy of its own to act, to react, but consciousness moves matter in a certain direction. And therefore the different parts of the material energy act and react under the influence of the presence of consciousness, which is the soul. So devotional service problem makes it, Prabhupada makes it really quite simple. Changing, uh, our consciousness from material to spiritual. Directing our consciousness away from the material and to the spiritual. Now, that sounds simple, but because of our conditioned nature or our long-term association with the three modes of material nature, which appears to be the reality of our existence, it becomes quite di difficult to change that or to redirect that consciousness. Therefore, the activities don't change so much. There might be a slight change in activities, but mostly activities performed for one's personal sense gratification are now engaged in the service of the Lord. One likes to do a particular activity, one should do it for Krishna. <laughs> one likes to express themselves in a certain way, one should connect that with Krishna. So the activities of, of the soul, which is pure consciousness, gets covered by the mind, 
but the consciousness is covered and not covered. <laughs> I'll give you an example. It appears to be covered, but it's not covered. It also thinks it's covered, but it's not covered. Mm -hmm. The example is uh, the sky and the objects that we may find appearing within the sky, such as birds, planes, uh, clouds, various things that we see coming from the sky or appearing in the sky. These are like the thoughts of the mind, and the sky is like consciousness. The objects that are in the sky never touch the sky, but they appear to be in, within the sky, but that's simply an appearance. So the mind appears to cover the soul, and the soul acts like it's, it's directed by the mind, but actually the soul is completely free from it. So when the intelligence connects itself with Shastra and Guru, in other words, carefully understanding the instructions of spiritual master, one can apply the principles of pure consciousness and gradually uh, withdraw or remove the coverings of the mind over the pure consciousness. And that is called a liberation, a freedom from the effects of the three modes of material nature. And that requires practice. As Srila Prabhupada said, devotional service is simply practice. <laughs> it's simply practice in this. And, uh, but it's a, it's a practice of cleansing as it's mentioned here in this first 16th verse. And these things over the mind, we are very uh, diligent to make sure we stay clean. The principle of cleanliness is a human principle that people follow to uh, a perfect degree or to something less than perfect. <laughs> There's different levels of what is, uh, what is actual cleanliness. But everyone tries to stay clean because it's healthy. If one becomes dirty, then they attract disease. And dirt is also a the sign of the lower modes of material energy. So the process of, of Krishna consciousness is cleansing the dirt from the soul or the material coverings from the soul, which are like, as it says here, impurities. Um, when you want to purify gold, sometimes gold has other metals over the top of it. And so you take the gold and you place it in a fire at a certain temperature and for a certain period of time. And that uh, takes away the impurities and brings out the, the pure gold. So we place our consciousness in the fire of devotional service and gradually through those activities of devotional service, we're removing the impurities of lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, envy, fear, and all of the uh, characteristics which are fully present within the modes of passion and ignorance. The modes of goodness may look like devotional service in the sense that the qualities of devotional service are similar to the qualities of goodness, are actually the same. The only difference is in the quality of goodness then the activity is still material. But when those characteristics which make up the mode of goodness are engaged in devotional service, then they become pure goodness or pseudo for transcendental consciousness, pure consciousness. So um, one, it might be difficult and it might even be in a little bit impractical to say that we should immediately raise ourselves to the platform of pure goodness. But it's a process. The process is devotional service, but one of the consideration is to move ourselves into the category of the mode of goodness. In other words, cultivate those qualities that are conducive to bhakti, which are the qualities of the mode of goodness. And then gradually, as one learns the process of how to engage those qualities, along with the 
time and energy one uses for devotional service, then those qualities, they're good qualities in itself, but they actually become pristine qualities in connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So devotees should think, how can I get rid of the effects of the lower modes, Kama and Loba? Uh, lust, lust simply means uh, desire for material enjoyment. The word Kama is translated in that way. Yeah, let's see how it's, Kama here is translated as lust. But lust means the opposite of love. Love means to act for the benefit of the lover. Lust means to act for the benefit of oneself. That's all. Or the material benefit of oneself. But greed. Greed is a very low quality because it uh, causes the living entity <laughs> to be very narrow minded in their approach to everything they do in life. The persons who are greedy uh, are not very socially <laughs> accepted. They have a tendency to not be able to, to work with other people and to associate with other people. They're always seeing how to gain more and more of something, whether it's more money, more possessions, more sensual enjoyment, greed for the things, you know, to have money, to have possessions, to have sensual pleasures is okay. And even within the material sense, it's regulated. This is called regulated life. But when greed steps in, the regulation is no longer prominent. And then people just try to get as much as they can. And then it becomes a, a bad quality <laughs> that no one likes a greedy person. So these qualities we have to somehow or other uh, remove through the process of bhakti. Bhakti is powerful. Bhakti situ is situated on glorifying the Lord. And bhakti is to use one's mind completely in for the service of the Lord in different ways. So these are the things we can think about in our, in our engagement in the process of bhakti yoga. I'll go down the purport a little bit and let's see what other points Prabhupada makes. Yeah, he, he makes a very sweeping statement. The only process that will purify the mind is to engage it in Krishna. Yeah. So the mind is by nature in the mode of goodness. The, pan, the, uh, the, the false ego is in the mode of ignorance and the intelligence is in the mode of passion. But we use the intelligence when it's purified by Shastric knowledge and by the words of the spiritual master. That means that purification means that we direct all our activities by higher knowledge, higher authority, and not simply by the dictations of the mind, which are very strong. And that will, it says, when we do that, we can destroy there is this, this uh, lust and greed and then gradually as the soul becomes revealed and then one reaches the higher late stages of consciousness or Krishna consciousness. Okay, so uh, we're going to take these verses that's in this particular section and is in a series of verses. These are the first two. Tomorrow we'll do verse number 17 and continue like that day after day until we finish verse 26. So we'll continue each day for, for those of you who want to keep uh, the uh, schedule. It'll be like that except for Thursday, which is the day we do this week with the devotees from Harrisburg. Okay, so thank you. We'll stop here and open it up for any discussion.
Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, um, thank you very much for this wonderful um, lecture, but also the lust, um, because it is the lust that Bhagavad Gita Krishna says is the enemy. Um, and I've also, I wanted to uh, clarify a doubt, Maharaj. So lust can be uh, eradicated, uh, can be overcome by bhakti, Krishna consciousness. But I've also uh, heard somewhere uh, in um, lectures that lust can only be taken away uh, by the spiritual master, meaning only if you, once you get initiated, and you follow the process, then you can overcome lust. So the question is, if you're not initiated, and you're still endeavoring, can you overcome lust? Well, the mercy of the spiritual master is available even before one gets initiation. But then again, one is still free to move in and out of that re relationship. But one gets initiated, then there's the vow of commitment to the instructions of the spiritual master, which makes that mercy continuously, continuous. Mercy is the instructions. So anyone can take part, any, anyone can uh, take advantage of the instructions. But when we work under the guidance of the spiritual master, we get the practical application of the activities of devotional service along with the spiritual, along with the knowledge that is needed. So then one becomes committed. So whoever made that statement is pretty much didn't clarify it or maybe they did. And that clarification is that they have to say that that one, when one works under the guidance of the spiritual master, that means they follow the instructions of the spiritual master. And then that's how uh, it works. It's not like the, the, the uh, it's not like, um, you know, the spiritual master waves some magic wand and all of a sudden your lust is gone. You know, it's not like that. It's not like some kind of, you know, hocus pocus or some kind of, you know, by the mercy of the spiritual master, which comes by his instructions. You know, one, one can, and those instructions are available for everyone, but those who are committed to following those instructions to the process of initiation are continually in contact with those, with that mercy. Okay, Maharaj, so thank you very much. So this is clarified. Yeah, so it's available. You know, you can be, uh, we, we, can, we can make advancement before we actually, you know, take on the spiritual master. But your advancement can only go so far. That's the process that Rupa Goswami has given us. Kriya. So through association with the devotees, one comes to the stage of taking shelter of the spiritual master. If one comes to that point where that is the next step for the devotee and they don't take that step, then they block further mercy that is available. They may still continue to get the mercy on the level they're getting it, but the further mercy is not available. They have to make that next step. That's why bhakti is a progression from stage to stage. And the third stage is bhajana kriya, which is shelter of the spiritual master. This is this is much uh, clear, Maharaj. Now, um, thank you. Okay, thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All oh, glory to Sri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Um, I would like to ask a question regarding um, doing Japa rounds. 
because nowadays I can't uh, make a fixed um, amount of rounds, even um, um, if um, the sleeping and eating is regulated. Sometimes I feel um, that I can't do anything and sometimes I feel that I can do over um, 16. And I don't think it's normal, <laughs> first of all. And uh, and I don't. Okay. I'll I'll, uh, I'll give you a little test. You ready for a test? <laughs> sure, Moraj. Um... Okay, now now think about this. Now this is serious. Yeah, this is serious. All right. Uh, when you when you think you can't do it, what degree does that fall in? If you have to choose between. Numbers between one and ten. Ten means you can you completely feel like you can't do it. Now, do you now where do you fall between one and ten? Mm -hmm. um, so ten, if I at all can't, like yeah. give a number. You have to say a number between <laughs> one and. One and then when, now when you come to think, think, think when you come to the point of I, it's too difficult, it's too hard. Remember that what number, what number of one and ten do you feel that? Four. Four? Yeah, I think I'm too lazy. <laughs> or uh, maybe. I'm going to help you, right? I'm going to help you get over it right now. If you follow my process, if you do your own thing, I can't help you. Sorry, Mahesh. Do you want help or not? Yes. All right, then follow this. If you don't want help, then just, you know, we'll, we'll go on to the next question. <laughs> Sorry, Mahesh. All right, I, I, I can see you're not so serious about getting the, getting the help then, so I can't help you. But if you're serious, I can help you. I'm trying to be sorry, Maharaj. You ask the question, you want an answer. I'm giving you the answer in a process that will give you the complete understanding. It's not a philosophical answer. You're going to answer the question yourself. OK, now. You want to try again or you want to give up? I don't want to give up, Maharaj. Huh? I don't want to give up, Maharaj. All right, then here, then try it. Okay. I'm going to help you. If, if you don't trust me, then, then we won't do it. Okay. I trust you fully, Maharaj. Sorry for it. But you don't want to follow me. You know, if you don't want to follow me, then it means you don't trust me. <laughs> You're not serious about getting an answer. You just you just made a question with with no seriousness behind it. It's just something you're saying. If you're serious, I can help you. If you're not serious, forget it. I'm really serious. I find well, then I then I can help you if you follow this process. But you don't you if, if you don't follow it, then I can't help you. So I'll try one more time. Now, when you feel like it's it's difficult or it's impossible, then what do, to what degree do you feel that? Is it like completely impossible, number 10? Or is it anywhere in between 1 and 10 to some degree? Think about it. Give you some time to think. To what level is that impossibility come? Does it become completely impossible? Or is it less impossible? What degree of impossibility do you experience? So let's say seven. Seven? Okay, seven. Now, um, now I'm going to ask you a question. All you say is yes. Okay. This okay. Is, you well, just say, you you just say yes. All right, from now you feel it's, it's seven out of 10 is difficult. Can you bring it down to four? 
Yes, sure. Okay, can you bring it down to three? <laughs> yes. Can you bring it down to one? If I try, yes. No, you have to answer yes. Yes. Okay. Now, can you completely give it up? Just say yes. Okay, yes. Okay, fine. There's problem solved. <laughs> Thank you, Maraj. <laughs> Sorry for taking this no. question, but I think it's serious, and I would like to be. No, you can do. You just say you did. You just said you can do it. <laughs> Thank you, Maraj. As soon as you, as soon as you, agree, as soon as you agree to the test, you can do it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> in front of everyone. <laughs> Sorry, I just no, you did it. You need help now. No, you you just did it. You did, you brought it down. All you have to say, would say is yes yes to all my questions, and it's, it's <laughs> solved. It, it's solved. Thank you, my friend. No more problems. It's gone. Hopefully, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> this this, this works. You know. This is a this is a test that works all the time. As soon as you agree to the positive, you can do it. But if you don't agree, you can't do it. I understand. Thank you. It works. But you have to agree. When, uh, that's why when you say yes, you agreed. If you say no, then there's no progress. <laughs> yes. Can you become Krishna conscious? <laughs> yes. Okay, here you go. <laughs> Thank you. Can I ask another question? It's regarding Jaffa also. Yeah. That whenever I do more rounds than um, agreed number, then uh, something always comes up um, to deal with, like personality mm, mm, factors or some something to clear up. Like I won't say I'm cleaning up my anathas, but something I face that I should change. And um, it's it it makes difficult um, than the um, so something come up comes up that makes uh, um, devotional life difficult like um, lust or greed or anger or something uh, it uh, becomes very strong and I have to deal with it and. Um, and then either it's successfully dealt with or not. Um, it uh, it's a bit little bit discouraging, but I feel that Krishna is giving me a test that uh, I can overcome. And I'm more and more trying to be grateful for these tests. But sometimes it comes to uh, sudden, and I can't uh, react in a nice way. Mm -hmm. okay. but, and what to do? But but these things have nothing to do with you. They're, they're, they're illusion. They're clouds. <laughs> clouds are clouds appear in the sky, but the wind blows them and then they're gone. So if you identify with them, they be, then they'll stay and they become strong. If you realize it has nothing to do with you, yeah. That's the first part, that's the first step in getting rid of them. The soul is pure. The soul has all good qualities. So when we're apparently attacked by these material things, it's simply the clouds of the material existence trying to cover us or coming from our previous attachments, that's all. 
And so I just don't identify with it. it has nothing to do with you because you're not the, you're not that body. All these things are, are based on the body and the mind. But we're not the body. We're not the mind. We're a pure soul. So if you think these things are real and you identify with them, then they become stronger and stronger. It's like when you, if you're in a, if you're in your house at night and all the lights go out and there's all, and there's complete darkness, um, then you become a little bit fearful because you think, because you can't see what's around you, you the mind imagines that there's something else there that might be bad for you or dangerous. The darkness creates a kind of a, a feeling of uneasiness, fearfulness. But turn the light back on and then you see that fear and that darkness is gone. Turn the light of just turn the light of Krishna consciousness on, and these illusions go. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah, it's very uh, good to uh, listen to it again and again. That uh, it's only illusion, and we don't have to identify with it. Yeah, don't identify. As soon as you identify and think about it. Do they grow? Yeah, it gets worse. Just like it says, you know, if you if you talk about ghosts, you attract them. Yeah. If you talk about politicians, you attract them. <laughs> if you talk about the opposite sex, you attract it. So as soon as we focus on, if you talk about Krishna, you attract him. <laughs> just yeah. emphasize Krishna, that's all. Thank you very much. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> With your blessings, Maharaj. But if we like our illusion, then that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> If we think, oh, our illusion is not so bad, I kind of like it, then it'll stay with you. Prabhupada used to say, how do you get rid of an unwanted guest? A guest comes to your door and you don't really want the guest. Maybe it's somebody that you some, but you welcome the guest in, but you don't give him anything to eat, no place to, no food, no drink or nothing. And after some time, the guest will leave. So don't welcome these things in, just ignore them. Don't feed them. Be <laughs> Krishna. Simple, right? You can do it. Hare Krishna. Can you, you. can you can you do it? Yes, sure. Yeah, see? So you said you yes, yes means you could do it, and it's at the same time it's doable. <laughs> Only by mercy, Maharaj. Sometimes I feel that I can't do anything really. Well remember the instructions, the instructions of the mercy. Okay. Thank you. Shrug, and you get mercy from two things, from instructions and from association. Mm. And association and instructions, both are forms of mercy. Mm. If, but if it's just you and the mind, then you're defeated. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. 
Hari Bol Nam Rata. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Well, Susanna Mataji, thank you to Susanna Mataji because that cleared many of my doubts as well. And uh, uh, thank you to uh, for the merciful, uh, encouraging uh, solution what you gave. So thank you, thank you. So my question is. Uh, how do we understand a uh, sense gratification in salvation? I just came through this terminology and I was a little uh, bit not understanding how to understand this. Is it related something to the Mayavadi philosophy? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, sense gratification in salvation. Well, sense gratification comes in different forms. And it's not just Maya bodies, it's materialists, jnanis, yogis, Maya bodies. The material, wor the material world, the material world yeah. goes on by sense gratification. Liberation is freedom from material entanglement. Okay. The uh, the Maya bodies they try to give up sense gratification, but their sense gratification comes in the form of uh, what we say impersonal liberation, which is another form of sense gratification. Uh, okay, I think in, that is what it must be uh, impersonal. Uh, gratification in person uh, sense yeah it means not serving the supreme but trying to uh free oneself from the entanglement material energy sometimes they say that's brahma brahman realization to know oneself as spirit soul part and parcel of the the entire spiritual whole but no sense of personality no no activities of devotion Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you, Maharaj. I think uh, that that little bit clarifies. Are you sure? Um, I think so. Uh, I have to read. Actually, I am referring to uh, Bhagavatam verse, uh, Canto one. Uh, uh, Canto 1, Chapter 2, Verse 11. So that is where I found this terminology. So I was a little bit confused. Rada Vinodi Dinini, Rada Vinodini, could you bring up that verse 1 to 11? Uh, we'll look at it. Uh, yeah, just a moment. 1 to 11. Oh, yes, 1 to 11. Uh, Okay, yeah, this verse mentions the three stages of God realization. So where in the purport did you see this? Uh, I might have to check. Is it uh, 11 or 
Uh, we, uh, we, we can't hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, no, Maharaj, I'm just finding where did I found that. Well, this verse simply describes the absolute truth in its three different phases, that's all. Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. And for the impersonalists, they go for the Brahman. For the yogis, they go for the uh, for Paramatma. And for the devotees, they go for Bhagavan. Um. Okay, Maharaj, I'll, I'll check where did I refer to. If it is around somewhere here on the, I'll get back to you maybe tomorrow on this. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Suda, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, Hare Krishna, uh, Dhanud Pranam, uh, Guru Maharaj, please uh, accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Maharaj, thank you so much, Maharaj, uh, for your wonderful um, uh, class today. Uh, I have a same question, like uh, Mataji asked, like a uh, mind and soul. I mean, that's where even I struggle with. Uh, so today's class was uh, very beneficial to me. Uh, so Maharaj, I'm just trying to understand Stand, like you know as you mentioned like mind appears to um, cover the soul but soul is not covered so just for my understanding so soul is always pure uh, mind is what which is contaminated by the three modes so whatever thoughts Mara. so I, I want to understand I want to differentiate um, uh, when a thought comes is it like uh, coming through mind or it's coming through soul because so that it doesn't bother me and I don't identify with them so like it when comes, uh, it comes from the soul through the mind And if the mind is material, the thought will be material. If the mind is purified, then the thought will be spiritual. You have to understand the material body and the mind and everything concluded has no life it's at itself. It's all dead. It's a machine. That's all. The active ingredient that makes everything work is the soul. The soul is the energy feature of life. And the soul is complete with everything. But when the soul gets covered by the material body, it acts through the material body based on its experiences with a material body in previous or present situations. You have to understand, you're not any of these things. You're, you're, you're a pure soul, but you have a mind. You have a spiritual mind, but it's covered by the material mind. But the material mind has no real existence. Mm -hmm. It's simply a cloud covering the sun. The cloud can be dissipated by the force of the wind or even by the presence of the sun. So when we get spiritual thoughts that's coming through the mind and without any blockage from the material, when we get material thoughts, then where the, the mind is uh, identifying itself with some something within the three modes of material nature, that's all. Okay. Sounds too philosophical to understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, Maharaj. So, yeah, so I, uh, that's where, like, I struggle with. Yeah, but just uh, choose Chant Hare Krishna, then everything will be clear. <laughs> yes, yes, Maharaj, yes, yes. So any thought, Maharaj, that comes, that identifies with the three modes, that means it's material mind. And it means, yeah, but it's coming through the soul, coming from the soul through the material mind. Oh, okay. If you if you have a white light, all light is white, all lights are white, but if it goes through a different prism, 
and the prism has different uh, colors on it. There's a green section, a red section, a blue section. So the light will go through those different sections and it'll come out, it'll be seen according to where that light is going. So the mind is the different colors. That's why, that's why the mind is called karmatmaka. It means colored by material energy. Just like we think we're a woman or we think we're a man. This is, this is just simply a thought. We are in a woman's body or in a man's body, but we are not women and we are not man. <laughs> we are pure soul. We can be, a man can be in a woman's body in another life and a woman can be in a man's body in another life. So which one is real? None of them, because it's all cha the changing of the material energy, that's all. It's like if you spin the prison, then you can go from the green light to the blue light, to the yellow light, to the red light. But the light is always white. It's just going, being filtered through this different prism. That's all. So we're filtering our pure consciousness through the conditioned mind, which has different departments of conditioning. And we're acting, uh, we're, we're identifying with the, with the mind rather than identifying with our pure self. That's all. Does that help? Uh, a little bit, Maharaj, like a very deep uh, uh, subject. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, Hare Krishna, yeah. though, then it'll be coming here. So right where, like... Uh, all right, right. Yes. all right, okay. We all wear clothes on the body. The clothes have the same shape as the body. Does that mean that the clothes are the body? Uh, no, no, right? No. Yeah. yeah, but they cover the body and they have the same shape. If you put a glove on your hand, it has the same shape. Mm -hmm. But if you take the glove off and you think, oh, there's the hand, that's not the hand, that's the covering of the hand called the glove. Yeah, this much. Mm -hmm. We're covered by this body, that's all. Okay, okay, Maharaj. Yeah. We're yeah. pure spirit soul, part and mm -hmm. parcel of Krishna. <laughs> We have a body, we have a mind, but it's mm -hmm. all part of the association of material energy. We mm -hmm. think, I think I'm Indian, I think I'm a woman, mm -hmm. I think I'm a, hus a wife of this husband of mine, I think I'm the mother of these children. This is all, this is all illusion. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have nothing. I'm not there that long. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it makes a uh, lot of sense. Uh, but uh, I'm really, uh, as like today's answer was like really helpful to me because I really need to like um, identify, like I should not identify with the material thoughts because uh, any thought comes to me, it doesn't stop there. I keep like, you know, adding, adding, and I see like uh, the day goes off in that thoughts. So, yeah, and... Uh, well, add Krishna instead of these thoughts and you'll be okay. <laughs> yes, yes, Maharaj, yes, I do that. <laughs> See, that's the idea. To replace, that's what this verse is saying. Replace your consciousness with Krishna conscious. Place material consciousness with Krishna conscious. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, Maharaj, yes, let me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Don't thank me. Just don't thank me. Just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> you chant Hare Krishna, it becomes more clear. <laughs> yes, yes, Maharaj. Yeah. I'm chanting Maharaj. Yeah. Every day I chant in the morning, 12 rounds. Uh, and I do later in the evening, four rounds. It's not very good, but I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, all your blessings and mercy. So. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. continue and you'll get better and better. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Then you'll start to see who you really are. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare.
we're trying to get we're trying to become Krishna conscious, but we're still identifying ourselves with this body. And therefore, it's like trying to mix two things that don't mix. Stop identifying with the body. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I got the words which I was referring to. Uh, can I uh, can I uh, tell you the statement which I was referring to? Please. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. So the verse is uh, 1 to 10. And uh, the statement which I was referring to was, uh, even those who are on the path of salvation desire to become one with the absolute truth and desire to commit spiritual suicide for sense gratification. Yeah. So what's the question? So, uh, yes, Mrs. So uh, I'm not able to understand the salvation. Okay, uh, okay let me, I'll, I'll explain it to you. There are, you're on the path of salvation, trying to get free from the material energy. Then your desire is, instead of becoming the servant of the absolute truth, you want to become one with the absolute truth. So one becomes one with the absolute truth means you want to merge into the absolute truth. So it's like, you know, a green bird going into a green tree and thinking that, that because I'm green and the tree is green, uh, I'll also be the tree. <laughs> so the green bird and the green tree cannot be distinguished because they look so much alike. But even when the bird is in the tree, the bird still remains different from the tree. So we want to merge with the Lord and become one with the Lord, but we can never do that. So this is called spiritual suicide. And it's based on a desire for sense gratification. Rather than wanting to serve the Lord, or serve the absolute truth, which is a person, we want to become one with the absolute truth. There is spiritual suicide and it's sense gratification. It's another form of sense gratification. Without service to the Supreme Lord, we remain still within the material energy Even if we engage in Brahman, uh, trying to become one with the Lord. If you tell the gopis in Vrindavan, just, be, just meditate on Krishna, they'll become angry with you. <laughs> they want to serve Krishna. They can only meditate on Krishna when Krishna is not there. But what are they meditating on? They're meditating on serving him and praying that he'll come back so they'll serve him. They can't wait to serve him. So, yeah. So the gopis will become angry if you tell them, just, just sit there and think about Krishna. No, we want to serve Krishna. We want to be with Krishna. That's bhakti. Yes, Maharaj, this is quite clear now. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Service.
Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj.